Psychologists of Reddit, what are some very common things patients say in your couch? Neuropsychologist here. I deal with people who have memory and other cognitive problems due to various brain and psychiatric disorders. For people under about 60, what I often hear is something along the lines of I just want to be like I used to be. Unfortunately, most of us can never go back, especially when you consider the effects of normal aging and our tendency to look back fondly on the past and overestimate our abilities and existence. People don't grieve the parent that dies, they grieve the relationship they never had with that parent. I'm only here because I was ordered by the court to get therapy, followed up by, I don't have a problem, I just got caught, substance abuse therapist in my past. Former psychiatrist now practicing another field of medicine, many people are living more in the life they imagine they could have had or the one they hope to have, than their actual life. When people become self-aware of this they often report feelings of unreality and detachment. In severe cases a person might describe it as having just woken up into a life that formed around them, one that from their perspective only just appeared. I very often heard something to the extent of I just feel like I'm living a life I did not agree to. I consider it a silent mental illness, because while warped, it often nonetheless allows a person to go through the motions or even momentarily appease depression and anxiety. I'm paraphrasing but, I've been living my life doing what I thought I should and then I just suddenly realized, I wasn't doing what I wanted to do, I felt like I've wasted so much time, I just don't see the point, I'm going to die one day, it's all pointless, it means nothing really in the long run. It's never going to get better. But what if I get better and then it comes back? I'm so terrified of that happening. This is too hard. I'm never going to be able to get through this. I don't know. You're the therapist. You tell me. You're only here because you're getting paid. You wouldn't care otherwise. I know I did the right thing. But I can't get over the guilt. I feel so alone. I could go on forever to be honest. A patient said to me one day. It isn't sadness. Some timosis a lot of the time as I just feel like there is a blanket covering me. From head to toe I'm wrapped up in it. I can't move. I can't breath. I can't be me. I feel like someone is just wrapping me up and I can't do anything about it. I pretend everything is fine. I act like I'm happy and having a good time but realize I'm stuck and can't escape. Nothing surprises me anymore. I think people feel as though they are the only one who has ever been through something, or that they are crazy. You could literally tell me anything, and it's not going to catch me off guard. I've never done this before so I don't know what to expect. I didn't think told myself I wouldn't cry coming here. Sorry, I'm always taking care of others, but I feel guilty taking time for myself or asking for help. Also interested in what therapists have to say. Two. I liked mine, but I felt like I kept talking about stupid things that happened when I was 12 and hadn't thought about in years. It felt like a trope and made me question the process. A lot of patients have been coming in recently asking why Haram had to die. I'm a licensed counselor that works with kids in crisis situations, suicidal thoughts, homicidal thoughts, stuff that gets kids placed on 72 hours holds. In a year I get about 1000 plus kids coming through the doors. The biggest common thread I see is that kids who are struggling pretend everything is okay because they think they are the only ones going through mental pain or they don't want to be judged by others. For kids, everything is new and they don't have life experience to compare anything to. So when they feel horrible they think they are broken or there is something wrong with them rather than that they are having an appropriate emotional response given their situation. Typically it is being surrounded by other kids and openly sharing their pain together and realizing they aren't broken the only ones going through this that is more helpful than seeing me every day. On another side note, I notice that we have greater expectations for kids than we do adults for social behavior. It is rare that I've been in a meeting where people haven't started side conversations, taken out their phones, totally ignored the meeting, fallen asleep, etc. Yet we expect kids to sit for long periods of time being lectured to all day while being attentive the entire time. Drives me crazy how adults treat kids versus their expectation of how the child should behave. I see a lot of involuntary, for example, 
court ordered. Client so I get I don't need therapy a lot. My response is that most people don't need to go to the gym. But if they do go consistently they start to feel better and different areas of their life begin to improve. You wouldn't post my inner thoughts on an open web forum like Reddit, would you doc? So many talk about things they regret doing. Also, about feeling empty or like a fraud in life. My therapist told me that depression seems less like a mental illness to him and more like puberty due to how many people seem to go through it and to different extents. Very often, clients start with, I don't know if this is relevant I don't know if I should say this or some variant of this. I've been a psychologist for 25 years. The number of people who have scathing internal voices raking them over the coals for the least infraction is unbelievable and so sad. Sometimes it is the internalization of a critical parent. Sometimes it is more biologically driven. Helping people internalize a gentle loving and critical internal parent is my specialty. Meds can sometimes help. EMDR can really help. Looking at developing healthy internal resources. Emotion regulation. Egg. Can help. But mostly. Trusting and believing that this hostile internal voice can be modified and changed is the most important work in a good therapeutic relationship. The relationship is key. One of the most common things I hear people say, in some way, is that they help other even at the cost of themselves. Helping others is such a positive thing. But so many people forget to take care of themselves in the process. I have had clients lose jobs, not be able to pay rent, or even just put a serious amount of stress on themselves, all in an attempt to help somebody else out. It's just not worth it. You are not required to help anybody out, thus you can make a choice when to do it. If it is something that will seriously affect you then you have the right to say no. Is it fun say no to someone in need of help? No. But is it fun sitting in overwhelming stress and not being able to pay for rent? No. Make choices that don't push yourself down. People understand that and respect it more than you would think. Not a psychologist, but many friends in that field. Most common answer and the reason for seeking help is, I don't know, yay kids, let's downvote serious answers. Does make me a bad person, does make me crazy, the blank normally being a thought desire wish. Short version, I hate my body and I feel like I have no control over myself or my life. If something doesn't change, I'm afraid I won't have any control at all and I'll just die. Double quote. Clinical psychologist of 12 years here, before I respond to the question, I feel it's important that I first explain my position. In my time as a professional psychotherapist, I've learned accepted a few things. 1. Patients tend to think therapists are infallible beings with magical powers that will fix all their problems. 2. Some therapists really like when patients view them as infallible beings with magical powers that will fix all their problems. 3. I believe number 1 couldn't be further from the truth. And I believe number 2 does more harm than good. So, given my position, I tend to be upfront about these realities with my patients, in as gentle and tender a way as possible. I don't want lie to them. I don't want them to become dependent on me. I do want them to recognize their own capacity for improvement and take the reins of their life, so to speak. This often means not giving blatant advice. As what worked for me may not be what works best for you. I believe the relationship, the unspoken, is far more powerful than anything I might say. As a result, usually around the 5th or 6th session, a large majority of patients will usually say something along the lines of, what exactly did they train you to do in school? Anyway, I've honed my response. Honestly, at least where I went, they tried to teach me to be manipulative and convince me that I knew better than you. I then explain my stance that the only difference between a psychotherapist and a patient, besides the label, is 5-10 years of schooling and a boatload of debt. I've found, perhaps anecdotally, that this type of honesty tends to be quite beneficial in terms of facilitating what feels like a trusting relationship. Time to prep for my first session of the day. Psychiatrist here in a very specialized field, your reality is my projection. Licensed psychologist here. Let's do away with the antiquated myth of lying down on couches. 
Also, if patients were in my couch, I imagine they would be asking how to get out of the couch to sit on it instead. Common things patients say would very much depend on setting. For example, you would likely hear different things in a college counseling center versus a community mental health clinic versus a state inpatient facility. If I had to make generalizations, I would say that people struggle with themes related to how do I cope with the ambiguity and unpredictability of life? How messed up am I really? Are there others like me? Can others accept me for who I am? Can I accept myself? Why am I feeling a certain emotion and how do I better understand manage it? Is life worth living? How do I feel connected to others? And have others also feel connected to me? What did I do to deserve? Insert it thing. Happened to me. Obviously a non-exhaustive list. What do you think will help you with this problem? I don't know. I'm not the psychologist. Okay let's see. What about you do this thing? Keeping a mood journal. Exercising. Whatever. No that will not help me. Okay good. So apparently you do know what will not help you. Can you tell me more things that will not help? I don't know. If I would know, I wouldn't be here. So, do you want me to tell you what usually helps with people who have this same problem? This and that usually helps. I'm not like anybody else. My problems are so much worse. You don't understand.